Hello, I'm Dr. Charlie Collins. Let's talk about research methods. Today, I'm gonna to talk about multiple methods. I will discuss multiple methods. I will define tri triangulation and scaling, discuss mixed methods, and I'll leave you with some concepts to consider at the end. As we've discussed throughout the series, researchers use a variety of methods to collect data, either in the quantitative numerical form or in the quantitative text or verbal form. Different approaches result in different forms of data. For example, experimental methods often yield quantitative forms of data. Field research often yields qualitative forms of data. We've also discussed previously how we build theory by developing a hypothesis, empirically testing that hypothesis, and interpreting the results. The most successful theories provide a comprehensive understanding of the phenomenon of interest. Is it possible, then, to build a comprehensive understanding of a phenomenon by using just a single method, or by testing the theory only once without what we call replication? I'd say that it is possible, but it's very difficult. Many researchers spend a significant portion of their careers in examining the same phenomenon. Elizabeth Loftus, the UC Irvine psychologist, has spent decades researching false memories. Robert Sampson, the Harvard sociologist, has spent most of his career researching collective efficacy. These scholars research the same phenomena by employing different methods, approaches, and data to research the same thing. This is the multiple methods approach. To use a silly example, let's say we're interested in the moon. We could look at it through a telescope, which would give us a macroscopic view, and it would provide us with certain types of information. Or we could have NASA take us to the moon and look at it from a microscopic view. Both ways are valid, but you'll yield completely different results. In essence, multiple methods allow us to paint a more complete picture of our topic. We also call this triangulation. Triangulation uses multiple methods to examine the same phenomenon. It allows us to triangulate or compare results to identify a, a middle point between those results. In a previous video, I talked about research on Skid Row by Forrest Stewart. I discussed how he used observation, interviewing, and archival research to investigate policing on Skid Row. This is an example of using multiple methods with qualitative approaches only. In his work, he's taking a somewhat microscopic view of policing in Skid Row, but employing different strategies and angles to look at policing. This can be done in quantitative research as well. Often in quantitative research, we are quote unquote measuring a fairly abstract concept. Think of something like extroversion, for example. How would I use a quantitative strategy to examine something like extroversion? Would simply asking a question, are you extroverted work? Probably not, because extroversion may be different across different contexts. I know for me, I tend to be extroverted in my classroom, but not so much around groups of people that I don't know or I've just met. So instead of asking one question, I may ask several questions that try to get at the different contexts in which extroversion may take place. So instead, I might ask questions like, quote, Did, do you make friends easily, unquote, or, quote, are you comfortable around people? Unquote, or, quote, are you skilled at handling social situations? Unquote. This is what we call a scale. Scales are composite measures where many items, such as the three I just mentioned, are ideas trying to measure one more abstract concept. So we can put these three items together to create a larger scale. Finally, in multiple methods approaches, we can use mixed methods. Mixed Methods uses both quantitative and qualitative research to investigate the same phenomenon. This is like our NASA example using a telescope versus actually going to the moon. Mixed Methods are useful because they can provide the microscopic and macroscopic view of the phenomenon. Additionally, an added benefit of Mixed Methods is that one method may inform another method. I'll use my own research on racial justice community organizing for an example. I'm interested in the critical consciousness development of racial justice organizers, especially white allies in the racial justice movement. To do this, I started my project using qualitative semi-structure interview techniques. After, co after coding those interviews, I've come up with a theoretical framework for how the organizers join and lead 
these racial justice movements. Based on these qualitative interviews and qualitative coding, I constructed quantitative surveys. These surveys are, are actually rated by observers, meaning research assistants listen to the interviews and rate organizers on a variety of characteristics, such as critical consciousness. The mixing of these two types of methods, quantitative and qualitative, provide a deeper look into this particular topic of critical consciousness among racial justice organizers. Well, that is all we have for this discussion on multiple methods. By now, you should be familiar with what multiple methods are, triangulation and scaling, and what mixed methods are. But before we go, some concepts you should know that we may or may not have covered. First, replication, which means repeating a study multiple times under different conditions to see if the basic findings are duplicated. This is very typical in psychological research. Two, an index is a composite measure of a concept. This is often interchangeable with a scale. And unidimensionality is showing that a scale is measuring the same thing, as with our extra version example. That is all I have for today. Thank you for watching, and I am Dr. Charlie Collins. I'll see you next time.